Hello, everyone. Welcome to this uh, new edition of uh, Rural Insights podcasts and videos. And uh, we're really excited today to be focusing on Dickinson County. And I'm going to um, uh, I'm going to ask Lois Ellis, who's the executive director of the area economic development over there, and has been amazingly successful. Um, and uh, I'm going to ask her to introduce our guests, and then we'll proceed with some questions. So, so Lois, thank you for getting this set up. And Lois also writes a regular column for us. We really appreciate it. And our friends in Dickinson, so go ahead and go. All right. Thank you, David. Great to be here today to highlight some of the work being done between the education sector and our private sector manufacturing employment um, base here. So I'm pleased to introduce to you today, Teresa Kaler, and Teresa is a talent ac acquisition lead for systems control, and she'll tell you a little bit more about the company later. Thanks for joining us, Teresa. And then we also have David Holmes, and David is in a brand new uh, role as the superintendent at Kingsford Schools, Brighting Township Schools here in Dickinson County, um, although he's been with the district for quite some time in some other leadership roles. So welcome, David. Thank you, Lois. All okay. right. Thank you, Lois. We're ready. We're ready. So I'm gonna start with Teresa. Teresa, maybe you can tell us what systems control manufacturers and talk to me about the growth. Lois has talked to me about the amazing growth you've had. And I've been over there to visit systems, but it's been a little while. So why don't you tell our listeners about, about that? Happy to. So I've been with Systems Control for 10 years. Um, systems started out in 1962 as a privately owned company, still privately owned. Um, we design and manufacture equipment primarily for the electric utility industry, but also for the energy sector. So as you can imagine, the power industry, the energy sector and so forth is very busy. It's a very dynamic um, industry to be in, um, whereas other industries uh, experience um, ebbs and, and peaks and valleys, we continue to grow tremendously. For the last 20 years, we've experienced double digit growth year after year, which is fantastic in any industry and especially in this economy. Um, in my time that I've been with the company, we've grown from 290, 300, you know, ish people up to 750 in the last 10 years. So we are headquartered out of Iron Mountain, Michigan. Um, love to be part of the UP. We do have two other offices, one also in the UP in Houghton, Michigan, and then also another one in the Milwaukee, Wisconsin area. So um, again, we design and manufacture equipment. Um, we provide turnkey solutions meaning that we can do the electrical design, the mechanical design, the manufacturing, the factory acceptance testing, the field testing and so forth. So one-stop shop for our customers, which is a huge um, competitive advantage. And then also, again, from an industry standpoint, um, highly tied to the power needs, um, critical infrastructure. So that's been wonderful to be able to support our country. Well, thank you. Well, so with th that's incredible growth. Um, Lois has been telling us about this over the last few months. So, so how did that growth lead to your involvement then with the Brighting Schools? Can you talk about how that evolved and what, what is it, how you're working together? Sure. sure. And like most manufacturing companies, um, the, the demand for skilled trades has only increased. Um, with an aging workforce, um, we need to, sub, you know, obviously build a, a pipeline of talent to meet the growing demands in manufacturing and also support our, our energy industry. So it became very clear that we needed to partner with some very strong and progressive and advanced and innovative um, educational partners to make that happen. And also, you know, for me personally and from a professional standpoint, we wanted folks in the area to know that they could have rewarding, meaningful, successful careers in the area, that they didn't have to relocate out of the UP. They didn't have to go far and wide to find those career opportunities. So, you know, it's, the key is starting early, getting them interested and figuring out what they like. And sometimes people don't know what they don't know. So it's a matter of getting them exposed to opportunities so that they can make informed decisions in their career. So what what has what what is your favorite initiative that you've engaged with with students and teachers 
at writing what what and systems what what do you have a favorite one you can tell us about there would probably be three but if i had to pick my top one it would be our work-based learning opportunities so we work with the guidance counselors at the local schools and specifically with writing township we have two or three guidance counselors that we work pretty um, regularly with to help place students in opportunities um, and again they get cooperative education credits for it um, but it's a work-based learning. So it's allowing them to apply the classroom experience into real life world experience. They're meaningful, you know, active, fully contributing members of the, uh, the team. They're getting that product interaction. They're getting the industry experience. They're learning good life skills, job skills. They're also supporting our business. So they are adding business value. It's getting them exposure. Some of them have come through the program in various you know, areas of manufacturing and, and engineering and so forth saying, this is exactly what I wanna do. Others have equally found out this is not what I wanna do, which is just as meaningful. So um, again, it's been a great opportunity for them to figure that out. And again, adding business value to us as well. Expand a little bit on some of the positive outcomes for the company and the students what what when you pull all that together of your favorites what what is what are some of the positive outcomes that just strike at you yep yep absolutely it's again giving them that academic and industry um, experience doing the classroom connection having them figure out what it's going to take to be successful in the real world our educators the the parents our community leaders are trying to help them make that connection um, we help reinforce that. And when they realize it's impacting your abil ability to earn a wage and, and grow their career and be successful, it's just another voice to reinforce those positive messages. Um, so that's very important to us. Um, again, learning through experience, um, getting them real life, real world problem solving experience and collaboration. Um, while they get opportunities to work in projects and, and team-based uh, um, classroom activities, they get to see how that's applied in the industry. And they also get to understand the leadership experience, the internal and external customer, working with suppliers, working in the community. It's just multifaceted. So it's a great opportunity for them. Um, four key points that I make with every single student, and it's interesting because they, their teachers and guidance counselors echo these, but it's again, another voice to reinforce it. Um, we call it four A's, attendance, show up at work on time, be there because your crew, your people, your team are, are counting on you. Um, we talk about attitude, come to work with an attitude to be positive. That doesn't mean every day is perfect, but come with a positive attitude that you wanna make a difference and you will make a difference. Um, that ability and willingness to learn would be the third A. Um, every day is gonna be different. They have to have the ability and the willingness to try new things and adapt to the changing needs of industry, the customer and reality. And then lastly, the accountability. Um, if you say you're gonna do something, do it. If you mess up, fess up. Again, just really good life skills. Um, our, our philosophy is easy on the people, hard on the problems. We like to solve problems for our customers. That's what engineering and manufacturing companies do. So having everybody be transparent, open, and willing to help each other is, is actually, I'm sorry, is very critical. I, I have to tell you, I heard uh, General Stan McChrystal, um, pretty famous four-star general, talk about this to a group of high school students that he was addressing and sort of similar four A's, but he began it with to get to these four A's, get up in the morning and make your bed <laughs> and then begin the four A's, you know, it's sort of focus, focus, focus. Uh, yeah. These students, and I'll ask David the same question. I mean, they could, after they're done with this, they go to work for you. Uh, they could continue their education at Bay College in Iron Mountain. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and get more training, correct? And if they, they want to get more technical skills and they can continue that after they graduate from the schools and your program, correct? Correct, yes. So typically we start in the high schools and even earlier than that. I mean, we're involved at the, the elementary and middle school levels with STEM activities, um, skilled trades events, um, we partner with the, the Vocational and Technical Education Center and we sponsor and judge um, events for multi-programs there. Um, but again, with this, they get exposure throughout their academic um, career. And then 
through high school work-based learning or production positions on the floor. If they go on to tech ed school or to college, we actually have them part of our internship and co-op program, um, giving them kind of a rotational um, opportunity to, in different aspects of the business so that they get that well-rounded experience, both the breadth and the depth. Um, we've been very successful with getting people all the way through post-college and then still continuing with us post-college into full-time. Um, that's you know a great win. Sometimes they don't come on board right away and that's okay too. Our goal is to really be a partner with them and in the industry. And our goal is to make sure that they get a great experience. And if somewhere down the road, they return north and come back to systems control or somebody in another employer in the community, that's a win as well. And it's also an option for, this is a great option for them that for those that don't want to leave Iron Mountain, Kingsford, Dickinson or the UP, they can stay, right? I mean, it's absolutely. Well, yeah, they, some of them get, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, no, go ahead. Now I say some of them get off to college and say, this isn't for, for me, or, you know, I've changed my, my academic discipline three different times and I still haven't figured it out. And that's okay. Um, it's yeah. okay. We're going to work with them, help them. And sometimes they hit pause on the education. They get that real world experience, save up and then go back to school. Um, we also offer education assistance. Um, we have classes that we sponsor through Bay College and so forth. So we're happy to partner with them as well to help their personal and professional development. And I, I agree with you as a former co college president that you want students who can figure that out, that maybe this isn't the right time for me. And instead of mm -hmm. amassing huge debt, maybe try a different route for a while. I think it's a great opportunity. Well, David, let's uh, let's talk about it from the school district side. I feel sort of guilty. I didn't wear blue today. I wasn't going to wear <laughs> gold because I didn't want to get into the Norbit thing, but I, I didn't know. <laughs> so, uh, you know, tell us tell us from your perspective, from from the school, from local education, uh, why has this been an important partnership to to the students in the system and. And how has it worked from your perspective, from your system's perspective? Um, well, I, I would just say, you know, as a community leader or a community member, it's important that we engage with our, our industries and our, the folks that really got this kicked off. Um, I was part of it initially, but had a great vision for making our school better, better for our students, stronger schools help to attract employees, which reaches a common goal with systems control and other major industries in the area. And of course, certainly helps our enrollment, which is a major factor in our overall success. So there's, a, I would say, almost a synergistic relationship of um, having common vision and common goals of improving the community. Um, but just in general, it was a natural fit. Um, they have you know, such a perfect, I guess, lab experience for students to go into and and learn by doing either through work-based learning um, we start like as as mrs kaler said with elementary visits um, <clears throat> to our to our elementary school we bring in speakers to the middle school and we actually had all of our middle school students tour systems control to the point of even um, bringing our staff our teachers there um, many of the parents that have the kids in their classrooms work at systems control or other industries. It's a great professional development opportunity to go and just see what happens there, um, gain a few tips and tricks of how they work with each other and collaborate, communicate, um, teach their own employees um, skill sets to move on and advance, and then also gave our teachers some ideas of how do they, they can incorporate some of these things. Uh, we have a STEM focus in our district. Um, science, technology, engineering, and math, and gave our teachers some real life examples of what they could bring into the classroom. Tell us before I, I should have started, tell us a little bit about your school system, the size, the, you know, the makeup, just a little bit. So in, in the Upper Peninsula, basically every school is rural, but we're one of the larger school districts in the Upper Peninsula. We're right around between 1950 to 2000 students as a district. Um, we serve the city of Kingsford, and Brighting Township, um, but also many school of choice students. So just a general, um, the large school in our local community. We certainly collaborate well with the other schools and participate in the um, Dickinson Iron Technical Center, which really helps to support things like these work-based learning or systems control um, being involved in our school. Um, and then 
overall, we're approximately 200 staff members, about 110 teaching staff, support staff administration. So fairly large school for the Upper Peninsula. And um, what what is, uh, and many of those students come to my former home, my alma mater, and where I was president, Northern Michigan University, and uh, they come with incredibly prepared. Um, a, um, what, what is the initiative that between the two that happened that you think has had the biggest impact on students between you and systems control? What is, you know, there, or there, there are multiple, uh, Teresa had four. I mean, are there a couple that just jump out at you that my gosh, these have had incredible impact on young people. Right. I, I think it's a, mul it's a multitude, but the sum of the whole, basically the entire process, because we didn't go into it in a partnership to benefit and say, please donate money to our district and system control didn't say, please train our workers. It's that whole common vision and mindset of betterment of the community, betterment of both organizations and preparing our students. Uh, so if I hit the marquee events, systems control has a presence at a variety of education related events, whether it's something like our heavy metal tours that um, Lois helps to coordinate which incorporates many local industries. Two, we've held a technology conference, uh, the McCall Michigan Association of Computer Users and Learning. We host that, um, or have hosted it actually for pre-COVID multiple times at Kingsford for the sake of bringing that mindset to our kids, to our teachers. Um, and System Control was present at, as a vendor and, and at something like that. Two, there are workers coming right into our classrooms to speak to our students as guest speakers, but then actually doing some problem-based learning type things with our students. And I will say that through that STEM initiative and through re recognizing the amount of um, manufacturing industry we have in our area and system control being a major part of that um, in our building, it's an impact of our curriculum. We've implemented a robotics class. We've implemented um, computer-aided drafting or re you know, went from the, paper and pencil drafting, the computer aided drafting, manufacturing and design. Um, a lot of those classes leading to our tech center um, courses um, that uh, really just feed right into the industry. So I think it's the sum of the whole. So uh, what, what uh, certainly I, I think uh, those of us in UP know and more people need to know, and that's one of the reasons we wanna do this is that the the, the Dickinson Delta belt is uh, the capital of manufacturing in the Upper Peninsula. No one can compete with the, what you have in Dickinson uh, with manufacturing. Uh, we could all learn from it. Uh, what are some of the, yes, you already covered a couple, of, is there, what are some of the outcomes that if you were talking uh, to your point, what are the, at the end of the year, the end of the year, what are the outcomes that you think is most important to young people as they go through this and, and to the district? Well, I would say um, to the individual student, they are better prepared because they see the connection between what a teacher says or does as an assignment to what actually is applied in the, in the work environment. Um, employers are continually letting us know um, about the soft skills that's that students need and employees need coming out. And it's great to hear the reinforcement of those soft skills, which are hard facts. Like Teresa just mentioned the four A's, it's really the hard facts of, of being accountable and, and you know doing the things you need to at work. Um, so those are things that you try to teach in a school setting along with the, the content, but to have the, the workplace application saying, in order to work here and be successful, these are the things you need. I think those are some real practical things. Um, if I incorporate bigger picture than just systems control, but like with Lois Ellis, um, our local area having the vision to put together an economic development alliance that's not just say the Chamber of Commerce, that businesses are willing to commit money towards making our community better, attracting employees, um, synergizing work, work uh, workforces and searching for workers and just overall developing the community or for the community. So um, it, it is, 
What, are, what about hard skills or the soft skills or hard skills? I imagine they get to apply those hard skills during their internship and experience with systems, correct? But yes. So if you take a student who participated in computer-aided drafting or mechanical design and wants to be an engineer mm -hmm. and they apply to work-based learning, you don't automatically get placed um, at system control because you want to go there. Um, you have to be the right fit. And they've gone through... and had some excellent students who didn't get placed because of just the, the things that they want to see in the workplace. But then they then are, in order to get the credit, they have um, the work site host has to sign off that they're doing the actual work. It's not just showing up and shadowing someone. Mm -hmm. that they're actually doing work embedded skills um, to provide credit to that student. That's great. I, I want to go back to Teresa to wrap up. Called, but you, uh, David, you want to tell us anything about the football season? Everybody in the UP is always watching Kingsford Iron Mountain and what's going on with football. <laughs> Any predictions over there? Or, uh... <laughs> no, no predictions, but we're hopeful. And uh, okay. I'll say that our um, kids are energized and our coaching staff is energized. And um, they use the term win, 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 actually. I'm, I'll share that with you. And Good. Good. Mr. Uh, the win-win-win is win on the field, win in the community, and win in the classroom. And, and that I really thought was great because you can do two of those things pretty easily. And that third will come along, that win on the field will come along. If you have good character, good work habits, you're doing the right thing. So the Wildcats, Good. by the way. Yeah, <laughs> you have an amazing program over there. You really do. It's a great historic, great history, too, of an athletic program in football. Uh, Teresa, anything as we wrap up you want to add uh, from the beginning? Is there something that you thought of uh, that you'd like to cover? No, I mean, I, I do want to thank David and the, the entire Brighton Township School. They've got just an excellent program. All of our educational pro partners are fantastic, but, you know, David and his team has been willing to um, pilot a lot of new things with us, and they've been very successful. So, again, very much value that partnership. My kids were, are, were flivers, forever flivers, so um, I had a vested interest in that personally as well. Um, so I want to thank, you know, Brighting Township School, and I'm looking forward to all the, the new things that we're looking to do. And, and next, you know, Lois has just been a, a visionary for us as well, bringing up a, a lot of opportunities. I'm fortunate to be part of a talent and education task force, the Dickinson Area Economic Development Alliance. And as you know, it was implied, many companies in the community involved in that. And, and Lois has been spearheading that for the last few years, you know, in Dickinson County. And she can speak more to that, but again, great opportunities, you know, and again, one of the partners that's not on this conversation with us, but would be remiss not to mention them is the, the Dickinson Iron um, Intermediate, Intermediate School District, the Vocational Educational and Technical School. Um, their programs have been fantastic. And we've got, you know, employees that are on their advisory boards. Um, we actually sponsor competitions and, and really active with the students. So we're very fortunate that Lois has helped develop that partnership and that engagement through a, a series of many events throughout the, the school year and even a lot of planning in the summer. Well, thank you. Someone downstate described Lois Ellis recently to me as the rock star of Michigan economic development. She's done an incredible job. So Lois, you want to wrap up about some things about economic development in Dickinson or anything you want to add to this or Anything as well, well, you know, from my seat, being an economic development partner, um, this has been an easy community to work with because everyone was really ready to see change and they've made the commitment and they're at the table and they're providing that good feedback. And if I can say anything about the partnership that I see between systems and Brighting Township Schools, it's just so deep and so strategic. Um, that I've just not seen a partnership at that level in, in other places. And so I compliment them on um, all of their efforts because it is very intentional. Um, and the outcomes I think are, are still developing because that pipeline's long, it goes down into the elementary grades, but um, it's definitely paying off. And so uh, their work is amazing to see happen. So I feel, I feel really lucky to be a part of it. So. Well, great. Uh, you've done a great job and everyone there. You know, one of our missions that Rural Insights is to bring information and knowledge to people 
throughout the UP about what's going on in other areas in the UP they may not know about. So this has been a great opportunity and a great informative session. And uh, I, I know our thousands of uh, readers and listeners will, will really enjoy this because they'll learn from it. So thank you very much. Great success stories. It's always fun to talk about success stories when, uh, especially in today's world where you're not always, uh, you're not always hearing that. So it's a nice, uh, a nice thing to do. So thank you all very much and uh, be safe and mask up. Bye-bye. <laughs> thank you, David. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you.